Hi folks, I'm Florian from iProcess and today we talk about the SDV, the Software Defined Vehicle. The term has been present in the industry for a while now and it's a well used buzzword by startups to sell the idea of their importance in the future as well as by established OEMs and suppliers to signal that they are gearing up for the next big thing as well. But what is behind the catchword? To understand that, let's go on a journey through time. The automobile was invented in the late 19th century and for about a hundred years it was a mechanical product propelled by gears, shafts, belts and many other parts designed for the exact purpose. Fast forward to when electronic control units found their way into cars around the beginning of the fourth quarter of the 20th century. A new generation of cars was on their way. The EE or electrical slash electronic era had begun. Now engineers had way more control over the capabilities of the cars, starting from engine and other powertrain controls, over comfort and entertainment, and, of course, safety. The introduction of EE components allowed a much more sophisticated implementation of active safety, starting from the upper class vehicles in the 1980s. Systems such as ABS and ESP, for example, trickled down into the compact class by the early 21st century and by now have fully arrived in all passenger vehicle classes, including the mini or city cars. So much for the history. Now, for about 10 or so years, there is a new generation of cars emerging and getting ready to take the relay from the EE era vehicles, the software defined vehicle. As the EE generation did not replace the established mechanical base of the vehicle, but rather amended it, the STV is also building on its predecessors. Given that fact, it is just fair to refer to evolution and not revolution. So as I said, the STV is still using a mechanical vehicle and a bunch of electronic control units. The difference now is that these control units act together rather than as individual controllers of components. Sure, there is still a physical distribution of controllers in many architectures, but this is changing. Generally, this third generation vehicle can be seen as a complete system with subsystems and not as an orchestrated coexistence of many components. That being said, the architecture becomes centralized. There is shared calculation power, shared communication and a design that allows the vehicle to act as one. The centralized architecture gets accompanied by a new era of connectivity. These days cars can exchange data with the cloud at any time to achieve many new features on one hand for the improvement of its own performance such as over-the-air software updates or predictive maintenance and of course to improve the user's well-being with information, infotainment and communication. A new approach in this generation of vehicles is the conditional existence of features. Customers get the option to book features temporarily, for example assistance systems for a long road trip or pay-per-use fast charge support. And customers can add features after the initial vehicle purchase, maybe some budget freed up or they learn something later. Also interesting here is the used car market, where as a buyer you can look for a car close to the configuration you like and then buy the missing features afterwards. In many cases this concept requires oversizing the hardware built into the cars and many OEMs are working on a financially sane way to do so. On the other hand, it can also reduce the variety of hardware developed and saves costs that way. As a closing point, the software defined vehicle is only successful when it is utilized properly, which means continuous improvements, over the air updates and a growing pool of features which also requires a change in the mindset that the start of production means the end of development. Can't say that anymore.